Okay, here we have my tetration machine, and you'll notice that it fits completely on my screen. There's nothing that's off screen, and all of the programming fits on screen too. It's six arms, so I don't have to scroll down, and at most 29 instructions, so I don't have to scroll to the right. Let's see what it does. So arm two grabs the input and no other arm can grab the input. And by the time it has grabbed the input four times, arm one finally grabs the stick with a blunder. Now once per the 29 cycle tape loop, arm one will move this stick to the right. During that same time, arm one will add four to the stick going to the left. When it finally reaches the end, one more loop. I can tell it reached the end because this grab fails, so this grab can succeed. It will push forwards and yoink all of the arm, all of the atoms that arm two has added. So it was a one atom thing grew to a five. Now it's grown to a twenty-five, but for reasons that's not going to keep going by x five, it's going to be more like x four in the long term. And now that there's two atoms here. They look like they could become a face powder output. And as it turns out, they get added to a buffer up here. I'm going to put on speed hack now and fast forward to cycle around 800. Because that's when the next interesting thing happens. And we're going to hit the end of that stick, one more loop, and we'll push that stick down and put it on the bonder again. This time, we break off two of the pieces for the face powder output, but we also break off what turns out to be 18 atoms to the right. So first, arm four, responsible for putting that back up where arm one can grab it and add it to the buffer, but now these 18 atoms have a purpose. And I'm going to have to turn on speed hack to cycle 3000 or so to be able to show you what that purpose is. Likely I'm going to end up trimming this fast forward out of the video. All right, that wasn't so bad. Well, my computer thinks it was so bad, but anyway, we're coming up on the end of this next stick, which is again around four times longer than the previous stick that we pulled in. And now arm three and five and four are going to be doing some shenanigans here. So arm three bonds to this large stick that is around, again, four times longer than the 18 atoms that it had previously, pushes it onto this bonder. Meanwhile, arm four, which has taken every pair of things off of this and put them on this bonder, now gets it pushed away. And it doesn't go back for arm one to grab. Arm one does not add it back to this chain. That was rejected. And it's rejected because there is an atom for arm three to grab on its buffer of 18 atoms. So instead of becoming a part of this thing at the top, this one becomes pseudo climbing rope fiber down at the bottom. This is waste that will never get used in anything again. Cool. And as a result, this is now down to 17 atoms instead of 18. The next time anything useful happens is going to be so long that my computer will chug badly before it shows it. So I'm going to have to describe it instead of actually getting to demonstrate it. But after this stick gets used up from there being 17 more cases where an output is put here and is rejected, it'll finally have nothing to use to reject an output, and the third piece will go up to the top where arm one is. By that point, the, um, the length of the stick of waste is going to be basically seven trillion atoms long. So by the time arm one gets to add something else to this stick at the top, Arm 3 will be given a new backlog. Instead of 18 atoms, it's going to be around 7 trillion atoms. And it'll have to work through that entire backlog before Arm 1 adds the fourth one to the top. 
Now, ARM6 has been doing a little dance over here, and we've never seen it work yet. That's because ARM1 has to add seven things to the top before ARM6 will bond six of them onto a waste chain up here and let one of them sit down on this bonder, where ARM1 will grab it and stick it on the output. So there needs to be seven brought to the top for every one output. And every time the next one is brought to the top, all the waste accumulated in its creation becomes the new buffer for arms three, four, and five to reject outputs. This will eventually complete. There's not an infinite loop in this. It'll, it has something to use up every point in this. But the amount of time it will take to actually use it up grows as something called tetration. It's super exponential. It's a power tower in effect. And this solution will take approximately the four ninths power of four tetrated to the 43 cycles to finish. I'll give a little bit more detail on that in text because I don't think I can talk about it while the video is running and have it make sense. But I hope this shows the machine in action to the extent that it will ever be visible in action. I don't think I'll ever be able to run it to the point where ARM6 does anything. It'll be around a Googleplex cycles before ARM6 does anything. But this is a demonstration of how much complexity you can fit on one screen in Opus Magna. I hope it's not even the worst you can do. There's probably more creative ways to get like the Ackerman function to fit on one screen, but I'm giving this as my demonstration of the inefficiency challenge. Thanks for watching.